Hey guys, I'm here today to do a video that I really should have done a week ago when it was Independent Booksellers Week, but I just didn't have time back then. So I decided now is as good a time as any to make this. So I'm going to be talking about some of my favourite independent bookshops. I absolutely love a good independent. Whenever I visit a new city I like to spend a lot of time sourcing um, all the independent bookshops and going around all of them and trying to pick out a few things that I like from each. All bookshops should have that sort of community feel that you often get with an independent. I think the bookshops I'm mentioning today are just extra special because they seem to go that little bit further to make you feel welcome and I've had great experiences in all of them so I thought I would share in case you want to explore any of them. So of course I have to mention a couple in my, well I was going to say home city but I'm not actually from here, uh, my residence city of Edinburgh and the first of those bookshops is Golden Hair Books in Stockbridge. Every time I've been I've really really enjoyed the selection of books that they have on offer. Um, all the staff are really friendly and I think even though it's such a small bookshop they manage to cram in a lot of stuff that I haven't seen in other places and I think that's one of my favourite things about independent bookshops is that often their stock is quite limited so it's not necessarily the kind of place you can go with a book in mind and think I'm going to get this. There are more places that you can explore at your leisure and discover new things that you wouldn't necessarily think to look for if you're in a larger bookshop because if you're in a larger bookshop there's often way too much to choose from so you go in thinking I'm just going to get this book and then if there's anything else that catches my eye I'll go for that but the end goal is to get specific books often when you go to a larger bookshop whereas with independents they often stock sort of smaller publishers things like that so you get to see a lot of options that you wouldn't necessarily have elsewhere or wouldn't necessarily be as obvious elsewhere. Golden Hair is one of my favourites for this reason. They do a lot of different genres, but they do them all really, really well. They have a great fiction selection. As I say, a lot of it is from smaller publishers, but they have an amazing non-fiction section as well that is really, really well curated, and it's absolutely beautiful. And sometimes I can feel daunted by non-fiction, but I never feel that way in Golden Hair because they just make everything look so appealing. And it's for that reason that I'm more likely to pick up books that I didn't necessarily consider before because I think sometimes you can become so set in your interests that when it comes to non-fiction you'll just read things that sort of cater to those interests. Whereas the way that they display it in Golden Hair books and make it look so visually appealing means that you're more likely to go, oh, that looks quite nice, I'll see what that's about. And you're more likely to pick up books on subjects that you hadn't necessarily considered before. And then on top of this they have an amazing graphic novels section. They have a whole sort of kids room through the back which I have ventured into a couple of times just because I like looking at all the really pretty picture books that they've got on offer but I haven't actually bought anything from that section so I can't completely comment on the range there but if it's anything like the rest of the shop then I'm sure it's top notch as well. My next Edinburgh bookshop that I would like to mention is Armchair Books on Westport, which is just off Grass Market. And this is a lovely, lovely second-hand bookshop. It is an absolute labyrinth of books. Like, I, I've read maybe about half of The Shadow of the Wind. I read it a few years ago. And this, kind, this is, when I saw this shop, I was like, oh my god this is the kind of place they're talking about because you go in and it looks like such a small shop everything is really really tightly packed you know it's got high ceilings and the books are totally crammed up there they've got really narrow walkways so you're just surrounded by books but they also have sort of um little alcoves that make it so much bigger because instead of just walking through there's like lots of little corners you can go off into like it's just an absolute maze and you can easily get lost in there for hours which i think is part of the reason why i love it the other reason is just because their selection is always really good um i don't necessarily know how it's run i don't know how they curate the books that come in and decide what's going on display but i've always found something that i'm interested in there they're obviously doing a really really good job of running it and making sure that everything that comes in is 
kind of off the standard that their clientele are looking for because I know having worked in a second-hand bookshop myself that can often be a sort of a difficult balance to strike but I think armchair books do it really well. The third bookshop I'd like to mention is still in Scotland, not in Edinburgh anymore and that is The Watermill in Aberfeldy. I visited the Watermill for the first time a few months ago and I absolutely loved it. I'd been saving up the trip for a few months, I tried to go in December and then all the roads were flooded so we had to turn around and go home again. Um, but once I eventually did make it I really really liked it. It's not the most accessible bookshop because Aberfeldy is quite remote, um, it's in the middle of the Perthshire countryside and it's not particularly well served by public transport so the only way I got to go was because I knew my mum was interested as well so we drove up together um, but I think it's well worth sussing out what public transport there is available because it's really really nice and it's just a really nice village as well so they have a lovely bookshop, it's in sort of this old cottage, it's all like stone outside um, and nice wooden floors, lots of wee spiral staircases that go up and lots of small rooms and things. Um, so it's really, really pretty. Go downstairs and it has this lovely, lovely open plan cafe that's got a sort of outdoor terrace bit as well, with a patio and lots of nice little um, ornate dining sets and everything. But the cafe is also in the, I want to say it's the travel section. You can just pick things as you're eating and I think that's just a really nice touch because sometimes when you go to a bookshop you're under too much pressure to decide in that moment. Whereas the fact that they allow you to sit down and read while you're having your lunch or whatever is really nice because it means that you've got more time to decide and they're completely cool with that. And then on top of the bookshop and the cafe they also have a really really nice um, home shop next door to it called Homer and there's actually a branch of that one in Edinburgh as well but I don't nearly like it as much as the one at Aberfeldy. Um, they do lots of quirky homeware and just really really cute stuff. I could easily spend a fortune in there if I had that amount of money because I am kind of an interior design addict, I like visualising things like that so just generally Aberfeldy is a dangerous place for me. The bookshop, cake, homeware, it's like my paradise. Moving on, I have three bookshops in England as well that I would like to talk about. The first one is Barter Books in Annick in Northumberland. I've been here a couple of times. It's actually really, really accessible from Scotland. So worth the journey. It's built in an old railway station. So to pay homage to that, they've got this sort of toy railway set that goes around the top of the bookshelf. So you're walking around and it's just this lovely, lovely open room with a really, really high stone ceiling, like proper old fashioned railway style. They cram in absolutely loads and loads of books into that space. There's just, you know, there's like a clear walkway down the middle with lots of bookshelves coming off from either side and there's sort of reading spaces with sofas and tables and chairs and things like that sort of dotted in among it. Um, they've got a really nice music section up at the back with, again, lots of sofas and things um, that's quite sort of open plan and lots of space for you to sit down and read. And then, of course, you've got this train going ahead and it's just really, really sweet. I found a few books in there that I haven't found in more mainstream bookshops. Like, I think the last time I went, I said to my friend who I was with, I was like, oh, I'm looking for these books by Emily Notham. They probably won't have them because I haven't seen them anywhere else. I don't know if they're still in print. And those were the exact two Emily Notham books that they had. Like, it's just that kind of wonderful place where serendipity is waiting for you around every corner. My second last bookshop that I'm going to mention is Mr B's Emporium of Reading Delights in Bath, which I visited a couple of weeks ago. I just thought it was really, really cute. I understand how it's, I think it's in the top 10 independent bookshops in the world. They do a lot of sort of tailored services to their customers. So they have one service which is a reading spa where you send in um, kind of a list of books that you've enjoyed, authors that you've enjoyed, your general kind of reading preferences and then they will set up an appointment for you 
where they design a bespoke reading list for you. You sit down and you discuss this reading list in like great detail. They give you tea and coffee and cake and it's just really, really sweet. I really wanted to do that when I was down, but I didn't think I would have enough time. And also it was, I think it's about 60 pounds maybe, but it's definitely something that I would like to do in future. And then the other service that Mr. Bees offers is a, what did he call it? It's like a kind of um, books by post service. So you get sent a new book every month. Like again, it works in a similar way. You fill out forms and stuff that say like favorite authors, favorite genres, books that you've enjoyed, and they will create this reading list for you and send you out a book from this reading list every month, which I think is absolutely adorable. When I was there a couple of weeks ago, they were actually planning this for a woman who'd sent her stuff in and it was really, really nice like overhearing the conversation about how they plan these things, about not even just what books they're going to send, but at what point in the year they're going to send things. Like there was one book that they thought that she would really like and they were saying, oh, maybe we shouldn't make it her first book because it seems a bit too obvious. So just thinking about small things like that, I think make it absolutely amazing. Just listening to the conversations of the, these booksellers, they were so knowledgeable and it just, it makes me feel like I need to be better, basically. They inspire me to do my job well. And the last bookshop that I'm going to mention is one that I nearly left out because I felt like I couldn't choose an independent bookshop in London because I've visited so many. I went on a bookshop crawl last year and I thought it would be difficult to narrow down the ones that I really enjoyed. So for the sake of a wildcard sixth entry, because I could have chosen quite a few, but I think this just has the edge, is Persephone Books. It's not only a bookshop, but they are an independent publishing press as well. They do these beautiful editions that are kind of silver, kind of a nice waxy feel with beautiful um, end papers. These are the two that I have from Persephone. I have Still Missing by Beth Gutchin, which has this kind of knitted end paper. And that's another really cute thing. They also always have matching bookmarks. And I have Cheerful Weather for the Wedding by Julia Strachey, which the bookmark has just fallen out of, but I absolutely love the end papers on this one. They're all flutterbys. Persephone are really committed to publishing the works of lesser known female authors, so I hadn't actually heard of either of these when I picked them up. I just kind of liked the premise of the book. That's something that we often kind of overlook when we're looking for new books to read. Um, because as I mentioned before, you can sometimes feel overwhelmed by the amount of choice in a bookshop. So you look for something that you've heard of, um, either just through like word of mouth or something that someone has said, this is similar to this other book you like, you should check it out. Whereas Persephone, because a lot of it is kind of lesser known books anyway, you really need to go through each one and find something that's perfect for you. Like I spent ages there because I just wanted to read the blurb of every single book because nothing immediately jumped out at me. And although they say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, I think sometimes that is another factor that influences your decision on what books to buy. If something looks visually appealing and jumps out at you, you're more likely to read the blurb. Whereas because these are all, they all pretty much look the same when they're on a shelf, it's really only the end papers that vary, there isn't that factor to kind of sway you, so you really need to give it some thought. And I just thought that was a really nice kind of book buying experience. Those were my top six independent bookshops. Let me know if you've been to any of them or if you'd like to visit any of them, which ones would you be interested in visiting? Alternatively, you could let me know what your favourite independent bookshops are and where they are because I am always looking for new places to visit and I will happily travel for a good bookshop. I hope that last week you had a wonderful independent booksellers week. Bye!